Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sally and in today's video I thought I'd talk to you all about my sew over it dress collection. So I've already made a top collection video which I really enjoyed making um, and a Darling Ranges dress collection. Um, I enjoyed making both of those and I thought I would do a sew over it dress collection one. And when I came to pull out all of my dresses I realised there's quite a few of them. So I might have to cut this video into two parts if it gets a little bit long and waffly. Um, if not, uh, I'll see how I go, <laughs> see how much I have to talk about each one of them. Just to say as well, I'd love you to subscribe if you haven't already. Um, in May I set myself a little challenge of making a video every week in May and I managed to stick to that. Um, and that was just because not only do I really enjoy doing YouTube now and it's really lovely to kind of connect with other sewing people um, in the YouTube community and um, I'm also wanting to get a bit more confident in front of the camera and confident with my editing and stuff um, so that's why I set myself a little challenge and I did manage to meet it so I'm hoping to carry on with the weekly videos but um, I guess it depends uh, how things go <laughs> especially with sort of isolation and homeschooling and everything else that is going on at the moment but I'm really enjoying making the videos at the moment and thank you if you have already subscribed and if you've watched my previous videos thank you so much um, anyway without further waffle I will get on with my dress chat um, so first of all as always I'll talk about what I'm wearing and that is the sew over it vintage shirt dress um, and this is one of my most favourite ever makes um, I made it from a quilting cotton from uh, Sew Over It actually before they stopped selling fabrics and I'll just stand up and show you the length so as always with their patterns I did cut off about 15 centimeters I think because I think their patterns are drafted for a 5 foot 7 height and I'm only 5 foot 3 or 4 uh, 5 foot 3 and a half I think more important half um, and I absolutely love the style of this dress I love the 40 star collar and um, I love the pleat here to kind of yoke shoulders and the pleats here. I just think it's a lovely, lovely dress. Um, I don't think I'd ever make the sleeved version because I think that's a little bit too kind of vintage for me and I think it would be a bit kind of stiff and um, I just wouldn't really feel comfortable in that. But as a sleeveless version, I really love it. And in the future, I think I'd love to make a denim version of this or just like a plain version um, because yeah, it's one of those dresses that I made and loved and um, it taught me so much with the collar um, and even doing the buttonholes I think when I made this I hadn't really had a lot of experience doing buttonholes but yeah it did teach me quite a lot this dress and it's one of those where I always keep saying I need to make another one but I just haven't got around to it yet so hopefully maybe this summer I'll get to do another one but I'll just show you the pattern in my pile here that's the um the pattern and obviously I made the sleeveless version um, yeah I absolutely love it one of my favorite patterns and I think so over it will always have a special place in my heart because I think so over it patterns and watching Lisa Comfort vlogs and reading the blogs and things are actually what gave me the confidence to kind of really get back into dressmaking and give it a proper go because I think the way their patterns are kind of um, drafted and the way that the instructions are written you, it kind of gives you the confidence to give it a go. I do think I definitely prefer their earlier patterns because I think there was much more of a sort of a vintage nod to those earlier patterns than there perhaps is now but um, yeah I always still really love the way for it. Anyway <laughs> on to the next dress um, and that is the Sew Over It Eve dress which is modelled here by Lady McElroy again um, and this version I've made two Eve dresses and this one is from a yellow viscose um, and obviously I've made the flutter sleeve version and um, I'll just show you the pattern so there are two versions of the Eve dress pattern uh, the flutter sleeve and then the straight sleeve um, I've made one of each and this is my flutter sleeve version and I just love this sleeve I think it's so pretty and it hangs so nicely and I love the little details of this dress, like this sort of gathered yoke again at the shoulder. And it took me a while to make this dress because I never really thought I'd be a wrap dress person. Um, for some reason I just didn't really think it would suit me, but after seeing so many versions online I had to give it a go. And I'm so glad I did because it's so pretty. Um, I love it in this yellow floral. 
I did have a bit of a disaster, well not really a disaster, but there was a bit of a problem with this dress in that for some reason when I came to do the hem, as always I needed to cut off by like 15 centimetres of the hem, but I didn't adjust the pattern first, I decided to just trim the dress when I've made it and that was a bit of a mistake as it turns out because the hem on this is pretty wonky now. Um, I think because it's a wrap dress you can kind of get away with it because it looks like it might have just been tied up a little bit on the wonk but um, for me I always I know that it's wonky <laughs> it almost looks like I've gone for the high low hem but I haven't I've actually tried to do a straight hem and it's just gone really badly wrong but um, I still wear it anyway because as I say I think you can get away with it just by um, it looking like you've tied it up a bit funnily <laughs> but um, it's a shame because I absolutely love this fabric and as a dress I love how it's worked out um, but it's just a shame about the hem. And if anyone knows, I know that when you make a full circle skirt you're supposed to leave it to hang for a while, aren't you? But I don't think in this dress pattern it tells you to leave it to hang, so maybe that's what went, went wrong. Maybe it stretched out a little bit after I'd hemmed it and that's why the hem's gone a bit funny. So yeah, if you do have any tips or if you know why that might have happened, let me know. Um, do you leave your Eve dress dresses to hang before you hem them or do you just hem them straight away? I don't know, <laughs> but um, overall I love that one. Another Eve dress is my black version, um, and this is obviously the one with the straight sleeve. Um, and I went, I actually chopped off a bit of this um, sleeve to make it a little bit higher. Uh, but this is a straight sleeve and straight hem version, and the hem did work out okay on this one, thank goodness. Uh, and this is from like a viscose crepe, I think also from Minerva and it's just got a little bit more structure to it than my yellow one. But I love it, I absolutely love this dress. Um, I wondered for a long time why this back bodice piece was cut like in two pieces rather than on the fold and I learned the other day when I was watching the So Over It Live So Along of the Eve dress um, that it's because there's some shaping in the back bodice it's supposed to fit your back a bit better. Um, because the back is slightly like, curved and that's why it's in two pieces uh, so that was good to know because I always wondered that why they didn't have uh, the bodice just cut on the fold like it would normally be um, but yeah, love this dress the only thing I hate about this dress is turning through these straps <laughs> which was so painful I did it on a knitting needle and it took forever it probably took me as long to turn those straps through as it did to make the whole dress I really struggled with those on both dresses but yeah, absolutely love the Eve dress. And I do have plans to make another Eve um, from one of the fabrics that I showed in my fabric haul, the orangey, pinky, greening fabric. I think I'm gonna go for an Eve dress in that. And I might brave, be brave and try the high-low hem, but I'll definitely need to sort out the pattern piece and shorten it before I make the dress this time so that I don't have the same problem as with this one. <laughs> okay, so next is my ultimate shift dress. Um, and I made the sleeveless version with a nice little gathered flutter sleeve flutter cap sleeve and this was one of my, one of my first ever so over it makes um, and probably one of my first ever viscose makes um, and I love it because this dress is just, there's nothing to it really, there's nothing uncomfortable so on a, there's nothing like fitted and uncomfortable so on a boiling hot day it's just perfect to wear, you just kind of throw it on and it's really cool and then you know there's no um, with the pattern and making it up itself there's no real uh, fitting or fastenings or anything like that it's just a keyhole fastening, a couple of darts and a straight dress and this fabric, this lovely fabric was from First for Fabrics and when I put this on Instagram I had so many comments about the fabric but um, they, I think they sold out of it really quickly so I was really lucky to get a hold of some of that um, and I really really like this. I'd like to make another one of these in like a linen, in like a viscose linen, um, maybe pink or something plain because I've only got one of these and um, I really love it. If you've seen my sew over it top collection you'll know how many shift tops I've got but I haven't got so many dresses um, so I must make more of those. Okay next up is another beautiful pattern that I absolutely love and that is the penny dress um, and this 
was one of the biggest challenges for me as sort of a beginner dressmaker getting back into sewing. It was the first kind of shirt style dress that I tried and it wasn't easy. It was definitely not perfect um, but there was so much that I learned from this dress. Uh, I learned how to put this collar in and I learned how to do the fiddly little button band and um, yeah when so over it wore this pattern out I just knew that I had to have it because it's like uh, I just love this style of 40s kind of dress um, and this cotton lawn fabric I just picked up really cheap from eBay um, because I wasn't quite sure how I'd get on with the pattern and I wanted something not too pricey because you do need quite a lot of fabric for this I think it's something like 3.2 meters because there's a big full circle skirt to it um, so yeah that was um, quite a cheap fabric and actually now um, you can tell it's cheap because it's kind of ripping a little bit under the armhole so I need to repair that somehow because I definitely don't want to get rid of this dress I really love the print of this I think it's just kind of it's almost like quite a 40s print actually with the little floral flowers and the pattern came together okay actually the button band is a little bit fiddly I needed to watch couple of YouTube videos or read a blog I think on the Sew Over It website to see how to do that but yeah it wasn't too bad um, and with the full circle skirt you have to leave it to hang for a bit um, before you hem it and I was quite pleased with my hem on that actually um, yeah I really really love that and next um, I'm going to move on to play suits um, I wasn't sure whether to include play suits in my dress video but I wasn't quite sure how else or where else they would fit so I thought I'd just quickly talk about them here as well with my dresses. So I'll start with my first play suit and that is the poppy play suit pattern um, which in my opinion is a very um, underrated pattern. I, you hardly ever hear about it really, I don't really ever hear so over it promoting it very much but it's just such a lovely pattern. Um, I think if like me you're not really sort of a jeans or a trousers or a shorts maker um, it's a really good introduction to making trousers and shorts because there's absolutely no fitting in there obviously it's all just elasticated at the waist so yeah it's a really good kind of introduction to shorts and then there's no fastening at the back it's just a keyhole again and no sleeves to insert because they're grown on so I think it's the kind of pattern that looks like it's really involved but really it's quite easy um, I absolutely love this and this is in a cotton lawn from John Lewis and because um, this was my first one I went for a cotton lawn because I knew it would be easier to work with and um, it was yeah as I would, and because it's quite thin it's not too rigid it's kind of um, it's not drapey but it's not kind of uh, too structured either so yeah I really like that next with the play suits I have Another poppy play suit made from a, a crepe, bubble crepe I think, and that was from First for Fabrics, this crepe uh, with a big floral print on it. And for this version, as you can see, I went for a button down version, and I've seen Lisa Comfort made, make a button down version of the trouser version of this, and I thought, oh, that'd be so lovely in a shorts version, so I had to go at it, and um, I listened to how she'd uh, drafted the button bands on, and I did the same. And um, but without realising I kind of cut the back how it was and I still included the keyhole back so when it came to doing the buttonholes for the front I just decided that I wasn't going to faff around with buttonholes I would just have like a fake button band and self covered buttons on there but they won't open <laughs> so I just when I put it on I just put it, um, put it on and then fasten it at the back and I don't think you'd ever know if, unless you looked really closely that they were fake buttons <laughs> So yeah, I really, really like that version. Um, and obviously you've got the cuffs out the sleeve and on the shorts. And in the pattern it does tell you to, um, to hand sew the cuffs down, but for this version I just did it on the machine because it was easier. And I didn't really fancy hand sewing all of that. Great. Well, I don't have a poppy play suit pattern to show you because I've just printed it out as a PDF and I didn't actually print out the front picture but I will link it down below so that you can go and find the pattern if you want to. Okay so lastly with the play suits um, I've made a culotte length version um, and it's exactly the same on the top but for the trousers, stand up so you can see the trousers, um, the trousers finish kind of mid-calf 
and I used the trouser um, piece of the pattern but I think I would have actually been better off extending the shorts because the trousers were so very long um, as I say I think that all so over it patterns are drafted to a 5 foot 7 um, height but I think this pattern is probably drafted to a 5 foot 7 height and then with heels because the trousers just went on forever and um, I already always take off about 15 centimetres anyway and I had to take off so much of the trouser to make them clot length that I definitely would have been better extending the shorts I think rather than trying to faff around with the trousers but anyway live and learn um, so that's how my culotte play suit turned out and I'm really pleased with it um, I just think play suits and jumpsuits look so funny um, the crotch is so long you can see where the crotch ends there um, and then the waist is right up here uh, so they always look a bit funny but it looks fine on I'm really really pleased with that and that fabric was from John Lewis and I got it in the sale for about £2.50 a metre and I think I got three metres of that and um, really really love it, it looks like it's much more expensive than what it actually was <laughs> probably the cheapest thing I've ever made actually okay, so finally I have two heather dresses and um, I'll just quickly show you those so firstly, I have this one in a textured jersey and you've probably already seen that maybe if you've seen any of my other videos or you follow me on Instagram, I've put a photo of that on there quite, a, quite often because I wear it a lot and also I've actually written a full blog post on this for Minerva Crafts, so I'll link that down below and it's also on my own website as well. Um, but this is made from a lovely textured Ponty Roma fabric, um, it's almost like an animal print you can see there and it's just really comfy and cosy and I love the heather dress for sort of autumn winter wear you can just throw it on with leggings and tights um, and it's super cosy and comfy and it's one of those patterns which is a bit deceptive I think because it put me off for ages um, looking at those curved hems and thinking oh that must be pretty complicated to make but actually it's not, it comes together really easy and it probably took me about two and a half hours to make um, so yeah, I really love that that's my kind of dress but again, I took off about 15 centimetres maybe more off of the hem because I want them tunic length and I always have to shorten them anyway so it's just a matter of adjusting the pattern but I am terrible at making notes on those kind of things I just do it as I go along and I forget to write down what I've done so next time when I come back to making the same pattern I kind of think, oh how much did I take off of that one? I have to go back and measure it again whereas I should just write it down or adjust my pattern piece as I go <laughs> bit naughty by now. and finally this is my last heather dress and um, that's made from like a quilted ponty roma um, in like a raspberry colour and that was from Sew Over It before they stopped actually when they were selling off all of their fabric I think I got that um, and that is really lovely as well it's very similar to the one I've just shown you so just simple kind of easy to wear autumn winter dresses and I love those um, this is the heather dress pattern if you need to see it uh, it's just simple jersey dress my kind of autumn winter dress okay so that is all of my so over it dress and play suit collection um, hopefully it didn't go on too long actually I don't think I was too waffly I'll have a look when I go back to editing <laughs> but hopefully I'll get it all in one video um, thank you for watching, I really enjoy making these collection videos, I just think they're a really nice way to go through everything that I've made and see, um, you know, think about where I was on my sewing journey when I made them and the things that I learned from making them and how I might want to make new versions of them in the future. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did please like it and leave a comment if you'd like to and enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.